My name is Saul Williams, and we're on one more two. Good question, by the way. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard Welcome to the Terror Dome. Um, I was, uh, gosh, I guess I was, uh, I was in high school, and um, I remember listening to it once in, a, um, in the music room in high school, and, uh, and we were having a party, it was like after a show, and they played that at the party, and I was just uh, totally... I remember watching everybody dance really crazy. And I was dancing, but I was listening to what he was saying, and I couldn't believe that everybody was dancing to what he was saying. Public Enemy was maybe the first group that made me feel really excited about being a part of my generation. You know, like I was younger than them, but I knew that what they were saying to us was gonna influence and affect us. And I thought it was everybody, because when you're a kid, you feel like what you're experiencing is everybody's experience, you know? Like, I would have been dumbfounded at anyone who I found out was my age and not listening to Public Enemy. I just assumed that that's what we were all listening to. Um, but as I grew older and had more experience, I realized that not everyone was inspired by it in the same way. And so a lot of my music, um, is to pay back that inspiration, you know? Um, like the song Trigger, where I sample Welcome to the Terror Dome, um, is as much of a way for me to say what I want to say over the music that inspires me. For me, sampling was a way of like sharing a bibliography, you know, or, uh, or trying to like in the same way that a, a professor may give a book list, you know? I think. For me, it's a way of paying homage to the people that I wish other people would listen to sometimes, you know, like Public Enemy. Um, they, were, they were super important for me, you know, and um, even with, you know, the weirdness of like now Flavor Flav being a superstar and, and, you know, all these kids don't necessarily know Chuck D, but it doesn't matter because they know Public Enemy now and they're going back to see what he did and instead of finding crazy Flavor Flav, they're finding public enemy with me. I'm definitely inspired by David Bowie, you know, but but my album is, is not as much a shot out of inspiration as it is like a, a graffiti artist tagging something, you know, like when you see a dope building and you tag it, you know, when you're a graffiti artist, you know, like when you see a beautiful wall on a building or beautiful, you know, side of a train, someone may say, wow, that's great, you know, but a graffiti artist is like, I want to put my art on that, <laughs> you know, the, which in some eyes is desecrating it, you know. Um, for me, I looked at David Bowie, like David Bowie was just in my side mirror, you know, like I grew up on other shit, like I like David Bowie, and the more I study him, the more I'm like, wow, and, and uh, you know, but... This album was entitled that because I was tripping off of, you know, the Ziggy Stardust album. I've always loved it. I heard it in Portuguese before I heard it in, in uh, English, and not because of Seu George, um, but it, I was exchanged to, to Brazil. And when I lived in Brazil, the same time that I heard uh, Sunday Bloody Sunday for the first time was when I was in Brazil. I was at a, a club in Manaus, in the, in the center of the Amazon. And the first time I heard David Bowie was through hearing artists singing him in Portuguese. I heard Starman. That was the first David Bowie song that I knew I was listening to other than like growing up with like fame and let's dance. But that's, I didn't really know his history as a kid, you know. Um, but uh, when I heard Starman, I used to love that song in Portuguese. And so then I finally heard it in English and was like, oh, they're singing that Portuguese song. <laughs> I, I, yes, I watched shows here. I watched uh, Ghostface, The Nationals, um, which we call it, um, Dinosaur Jr., um, The Battles, and yeah, um, which was all cool. Um,
I'd love to curate this. If I were to curate this, I'd have um, everyone from, you know, like Africa Bambada to Bad Brains to, I don't know, I'd see who we could get. <laughs> it's about time. It's about time that people, you know, uh, on one hand, cough it up for integrity and, and begin to pay what's what's suitable for what fulfills a need and, and to also experience things for free. I think it's all it's all interesting and, and the dissolvement of the industry is just the improper allocation of, of funding. You know, it's 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 just uh, it's the bullshit falling as the truth prevails. But people are still paying for stuff. You know, they're just paying, they want to pay directly, they want to know where their money's going, you know, and they want to weigh its value, you know, like wanting to hold something before you purchase it. Like, well, let me see, you know, like, it makes sense to me. And it can still benefit artists greatly. I mean, look at even the way that artists sell, you know, one song on iTunes for $2, you know, which is, uh, especially if you're an independent artist, that's, that's more than you'd get for one song. That might be what you'd get for one album <laughs> back with the disproportionate allocation of funds to the industry, you know? Well, I think music is the most direct, but that's not, you know, music has also been the most responsive to my work, you know, like, uh, I mean, poetry is, has been cool, um, has been more than cool, you know, it's opened beautiful doors and, 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 and is what led me to do music. And, you know, it's the mother, you know, um, often ignored and, and, you know, the all-powerful. Um, but it but it pushed me towards music, and music has been great, but I would be doing much more acting if I got cooler offers, you know, or just interesting offers, or sometimes any, you know, like it's... Uh, in the same way that the music world is, you know, is focused, especially in the genre that I'm often lumped in, hip hop. Um, you know, it's been all this gangster stuff, and so I, I didn't really have enough chains for that or jewelry. Um, I had to suit up. Uh, in the same way that that's happened in music and film, there was a, just a different thing that they were looking for. You know. I'm asked to play a cop or a drug dealer, which I, you know, like it's just, all right, but what, you know, it's, it just loses its interest, but I'm open. I just did a film. Um, yeah, I just did a film called um, New York, I Love You, or I Love You, New York.